Yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Titans Tube. I know you're so excited for this wow. episode. We're going to be breaking down the upcoming Monday night football game between the Titans and the Houston Texans. Before we do that, shout out to our sponsors, Hangten.com. Look at this sweet shirt. It's the new Mariota Aloha shirt with the glove. Maybe Mariota needs to bring the, glo- the glove back. It's good luck. Anyways, yeah. use the code uh, Titans2 for 10% off your order. Also, check out the Backyard Dog Barbecue Sauce information in the description below. They got a GoFundMe up trying to raise some money to get their product off the ground. Uh, and then also, thank you to all of our patrons. And uh, if you want to listen to this show as a podcast, you can subscribe to Titans Tube on iTunes now. Listen to every episode, just the audio, because it's that sweet. Good all job, right, Caleb. Justin. That's a lot of shout outs you do, and you've got it down pat now. I'm going to pat myself on the back for that. How's that yeah, for having it down pat? pat. Thank you, dude. Would, uh, but we're talking we're talking Titans and Texans on Monday night. Big divisional game. We actually beat the Texans the first time, Justin, if you remember, with Mr. Blaine Gabbert at quarterback. Luckily, based on some breaking news that we just received right now, Marcus Mariota practiced fully on Friday and should be a full go Monday night. So we will have him back against the Texans team this week, do you think that'll be a factor, Justin? What but are your do, thoughts? I don't on this know. Game? Do we even need him? Because we totally got him beat with Gabbard and Kevin Byard playing quarterback. So maybe if we just used a mix of those two guys, we can get the job done again. No, no, we desperately need Mariota back. That was a joke. Thank the Lord, Mariota will be healthy for this game. Is, is do you think this game? Uh, just jumping right into it. Texans are seven and three. We are five and five heading into this game, coming off a spirit-breaking loss to the Colts. Spirit. I'm still trying to pick up the pieces from that game. Um, but would you consider this game a must win? If, if we lose this game, the Titans drop to five and six on the season with five games left to play. Soft schedule uh, for the remaining remainder of the season if you just kind of look at the team records of the upcoming December games. But would you think this is a must win game for us to stay in this in this playoff? Uh, I mean, you know, even if we drop this game and then went out, that's still 10 and six. I would think that would be good enough to secure a wild card spot. Uh, but I don't want to put that kind of pressure on us having to win out. I'm not really sure a nine yeah. and seven record uh, would get it done for, for making the wild card spot, especially if it had to go through the Andrew Luck and the Colts again uh, week 17. We do have some easy ones or easy ones coming up. I mean, the Giants here have yeah. gotten a few wins recently. Uh, Redskins. The Giants are starting to scare me a little yeah. bit though, over the past few weeks. That I've been more worried about playing them. Honestly, out of all season. the teams we have left, the Jags are the only team I'm not worried about at all. All the other teams, <laughs> I'm starting. I mean, even even the Redskins with Colt McCoy look, uh, you know, they're, they're putting up some fights. They almost beat, came back and beat the Texans after the Texans just so rudely took out Alex Smith. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, uh, I don't know. I you know what? It, it is a must win, I think, in my mind. I don't think we can drop another division game, especially with how uh, the 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 morale of the team and the fan base is feeling after that smackdown we got put on by the Colts, or that the Colts put on us. Yeah. Um, so to drop another division game, especially on the road, to, to a team that, that would be their, what, eighth win in a row? And they're yeah. just going to carry oh, that momentum through insanity. the rest of the season. So, yeah, I think we need to stop their momentum right now and, and start some of our own to finish out the rest of the season so we don't uh, have any more lapses like we saw last Sunday. So, yeah, Justin, I'm going to say it is a must-win game. Uh, do I still think we can make the playoffs with losing this game? Yes, but if we drop this game, I think yeah. the team morale will be so low that we'll probably end up dropping yeah. a few other games maybe against the Redskins or maybe the Jags, you know? I don't know. So, yes, I'm going to say this is a must-win. Do you agree? Yeah. I would agree as far as uh, wanting to win the division. I think if we lose this game, we could say goodbye to to any kind of taking the AFC South hopes for the rest of the season, and we'd have to keep our fingers crossed uh, to make it in as a wild card somehow because there's some competition for the wild card in the AFC with the Chargers, the uh, the Bengals and Ravens are are kind of in the mix there. The Dolphins are 5-5. and on the Colts. Oh, my God. The Colts. The Colts. They, they're totally in the mix now, and I, I, I can't believe hey, it. Hey, don't, That's don't insane. count out the Browns either. They are still technically in the hunt. <laughs> Saw that graphic uh, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, they are. Browns are still in the hunt for a playoff spot, so we got to make sure we secure that wild card spot I, I, over I, the That's Cleveland fine Browns. with me. I, I would, I will, I will take the Browns in the playoffs over the Colts. Hey, take amen. it from them, Browns. Amen. <laughs> I would, no, I prefer the Titans in. Before the By Browns the way, if you're a Colts fan joining for joining us for this episode to talk about the FC South team, we we still hate you guys a lot. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. Don't get the wrong idea. I don't care yeah. that yesterday was Thanksgiving and I'm supposed to be thankful. I am not thankful for your team, your franchise, your organization, your dumb, 
ugly quarterback with the neck beard. I don't. I, I, I hate all of it. So just wanted to get that out of the way. Yeah. It's still there. Hatred. No, that's a, that's an heart. important point to to point yes. out, Caleb. I'm glad you glad you threw that yeah, in. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Um, we should actually incorporate that into any episode ever. We will from just now like on. in March. Yeah. We'll make a video and we'll start talking about how much we hate the Colts. I'm still. cool. Okay, let, let's talk about this but Texans anyway. team for a little bit. Uh, okay. We, we beat them the first time. Uh, it came down to the wire. We had to start playing Gabbert, but Deshaun, ja- Deshaun Watson, I almost said Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson? Deshaun Watson. He's a receiver. Yeah, I know, I'm a fool. But uh, if we remember, he, he ran out the last 17 seconds of the clock in the fourth quarter by himself when they had a chance to. So he's kind of a fool in his own right <laughs> then. Yeah. Yes. But uh, since then, the Texans have been V-hot. Uh, Deshaun Watson, over 2,500 yards passing, 18 TDs, and nine interceptions. A little better than Mariota's stats, I'll say that. Well, he has more interceptions, though. True. So, ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha for you, Deshaun Watson. But are are they really hot? I mean, yes, they are, as if you just look at the W's next to these past eight games. But in these W's, two of them have been overtime wins, and another two, their past two weeks, have been two point wins. So, not exactly dominating these games they're not dominating in the same sense as a lot of the other top or tier division leading teams across the league this year so they seem to be beatable but their opponents are just not getting the job done late in the game but the Texans are so credit to them for that winning close games is is a valuable asset to have in this league uh, but again, they, they are a beatable team. I would dare say that they may not be as strong as that seven and three record indicates um, because yeah, the lot, lots of close wins in there. Um, so so yeah, and one of well, I know they're a completely different team from September, but one of their losses uh, was to the Giants. Yeah, the Giants have now strung strung together uh, a couple wins, but before that, they were like one and seven with their only win coming in Houston, beating them at home. So I know a lot of Titans fans are down right now because of the performance last week against the Colts. But this Texans team, uh, my point is that they're they're beatable. And I think if we come in and play our game, especially with the way we've seen this team play in some games this year, the Patriots, the Cowboys, the Eagles, uh, I, I think I think we definitely have a good chance in this one. Yeah, I mean, the te- the Texans fit very well into the rest of the AFC South with their inconsistent play and just uh, almost like confusing team at times at one second they're being a good team next second they're losing to the giants uh we mentioned it before the show but yeah some of those wins they've gotten buffalo nathan peterman threw a pick six late in the fourth quarter texans only win by a touchdown uh brandon mcmanus missed that game winning field goal uh when they played denver two weeks ago texans only won by two that would have been it colt mccoy almost came back on them uh in the final seconds and came down to the final drive um, so and they had a very long pick six in that game as true. well. I think over I think Alex Smith actually threw six, that pass. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're, they're finding ways to win. I don't want to discredit their seven and three record. You know, finding ways to win in the NFL is what it's all about. End of the day, the win loss record, mm-hmm. and they're finding ways to do it while the rest of the AFC South uh, is struggling, especially the Titans right now to string together uh, mm-hmm. consistent wins. But uh, Still a formidable but team. But especially, especially the Jags that are struggling. De- definitely, definitely want to point out more hate for another division rival. Yes, the yes. Jags are struggling the most, and it's beautiful to witness. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, okay. that, that, that's that's good. So so is this Texans team for real? Um, uh, yes, it seems like we, we kind of address that uh, every year, it seems like, lately, where the Texans you know, come in leading a, a division that may not be – a very strong division because the FC South, it really isn't. Uh, And they have a good record, but they seem to be squeaking by finding ways to win. They're not, they're not running away against teams in these games. Like the, like the Brock Osweiler year, like they seemed like a very beatable team, but they kept, they kept finding ways to win with Brock Osweiler as their starting quarterback and wind up winning the division. Um, so yeah, it's kind of the same story for me. Is is that th- this team does find ways to win, but but they're beatable. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. What what was the original question? No, that that was it. Just finding ways. I mean, if we're gonna beat if we're I'm gonna beat this, this Texans team like we did the first time this year playing at home, I mean, what's it gonna come down to for for your mind? Texans are kind of middle of the road in all uh, statistical categories. Minus they have a top ten defense. Uh, they're clocking in at number six yeah. in the NFL right now in overall defense. Titans are actually number seven, so we got the, we're still rolling with that top ten defense even after last week's debacle yeah. against the Colts, giving up thirty eight points. Um, so so, so they look to be. I mean, we've all we've already known that the Texans have had a good defense for years past. 
past. Obviously, we hired the defensive coordinator as our head coach. Welcome to Tennessee, Mike Vrabel. But uh, as far as their offense yeah. goes, even with Deshaun Watson, he's having a pretty, pretty good rebound season, but nothing like he was the first five games of his rookie career. Um, so so what do you see? Yeah. I mean, they still got DeAndre Hopkins but traded still, for Demarius yeah. Thomas during the bye week after Will Fuller went down with ace ACL injury. So they have some weapons, but it, it, they don't seem as threatening on offense as they do, say, on defense. So... Right, and then they do have that emerging player uh, with the unusual Cootie. name, Kiki Kuti, Kiki Kiki Kuti, Kuti Kuti. As as fun as his name is to say, he can be a legitimate threat for them in in this offense, and he's more involved, I think, than Demarius Thomas. I don't know how Demarius Thomas hasn't been really producing at all since he's uh, been traded to that team to kind of take over for Will Fuller. Uh, I don't even think they're throwing him the ball. He What, he had like one target and zero catches against yeah. the Redskins, something like that. Um, so so they do have, have weapons. Uh, they're often still, though, centers around uh, – I mean, they do have good balance, but it does center around Lamar Miller a lot. He gets a lot of work in this offense carrying the ball. I think he's, he's only in, in the middle in terms of production – uh, but but he's a workhorse for him, and uh, and kind of how he does kind of dictates dictates the rest of their offense in in that particular game. Uh, but as we've seen, Deshaun Watson is is such a he's a weapon himself. He, he's he's a he's an elite athlete at the quarterback position. He can kill you with his legs, and he's got a big arm too. Uh, and when he's on his game, he can dice you up. The Titans have seen that happen before. Uh, to the tune of 50 plus points in a game that we will no longer spend time talking about. Um, so yeah, th- this this Texans uh, offense, you know, they they can get hot, and you know, like you said, DeAndre Hopkins, man, uh, we we got to find a way to contain that guy, or he will he will destroy Odori Jackson after coming off a poor game covering T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, uh, it's going to be um, a rough time. You know, it's, it's hard to really break down advantages and disadvantages when the Titans looked as poor if they as poor as poor they've looked in years last week against the Colts. There was no bright spots across the board. Uh, our secondary got torched by T.Y. Hilton. We're coming in with a, a receiving crew that's even better, in my mind, with the Texans, with DeAndre Hopkins and Cootie and Demarius Thomas and even Lamar Miller out of the backfield. Um and so, yeah, I can't give us the advantage in that one. I, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. either. I, I, I can't. I just can't. And, and you're right about Lamar Miller. I mean, he's not, like, putting up crazy good numbers, but he's been efficient, more efficient than our debilitating run game has been. I mean, he has, like, 20 more carries about more than Deion Lewis and then over 200 yards more or about 200 more rushing – 200 more rushing yards than Deion Lewis. So he's getting the job done enough to where their offense yeah. is lethal enough to win these games. <laughs> Yeah, and he's he's kind of the bell cow running back too. I know they've got <clears throat> they have Alfred Blue back there. Uh, I think Dante Freeman. He's actually going to be out this game. That, that running back from from Texas is is injured. Yes. I think still. Uh, and and yeah, Alfred Blue will come in and, and get a few carries here and there. But it's mainly Lamar Miller. He's the bell cow, the workhorse back. Um, and like you said, he's a good weapon in the passing game too. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Do they have a, a threat at tight end? Um, Ryan, Ryan Griffin. Griffin? Yeah, no, no more Fedora Wits. God. Unless is he still nah, their tight end? I don't know. I don't know. It, excuse us for our, for our lack of knowledge, <laughs> Texans. But I hate watching your team and your games because you're a freaking division. Yeah, rival. it does suck. Um, but but anyway, yeah. Uh, so defense has got has got to come back and 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 hopefully find a way to establish uh, the line of scrimmage, get some push up front, whether uh, they're running the ball or. Deshaun Watson is sitting down in the pocket uh, and able to pick us apart like Andrew Luck was. Uh, we, we've got to see a bounce-back game, not only from the, the defensive line of scrimmage, but the offense. If, if we can transition to the offense, Caleb, if, the, if our offensive line comes out and plays once again like they did against the Colts, I fear for Mariota's life. Mm. Legitimately think he will I die. Mean, he will be the first player ever to die on the field. Uh, wow. Because yeah, that that front seven is is completely formidable. Sorry, I got I got very I mean, more. We're looking, there, but it could be dangerous at for him. What they did to Alex Smith last week, they snapped his leg in half. So uh, I mean, yeah, there's you reason know, to worry gosh. for Mariota back there if our offensive line fails to show up once again, which would be like their at least their third time this season. Uh, 
yeah. that they just, you know, they decided not to play. They decided just to let Mariota just get, continually get sacked uh, again and again. So, if, yeah, if you're, yeah, if you're right, if that happens again and uh, Luan and the boys just decide that, they're not going to show up on Monday night and then Mariota might literally get snapped in half. Uh, not just his leg, like yeah. Alex Smith, his body would get broken over J.J. Back, J.J. Watt's knee. Um, yes. Um but yeah, and but we've seen this Titans offensive line do a, a good job against this same front seven back in week two. Although I don't think Jadavian Clowney played, so that is a big X factor. Um, so he's he's going to be we're going to be seeing him for the first time this year. Uh, but they played well enough for Blaine Gabbert to to sit back there and make enough plays to win us a game. So I mean, it's possible that this offensive line they can play at a very good top five offensive line level. We just got to see that consistency yeah. again. J.J. White is, is coming into this game with 10 sacks now on the season, so he's got plenty of great football left in him. He's he's not slowing down I mean, at all. Is, uh, so he's he's playing great right now. Is that the key to the game for um, every Titans fan is just win the trenches, especially on the O line and, and, and D line <laughs> yeah, too? Because throw it in, we didn't get we had like one uh, pressure to our record last week against the Colts. Like one out of 30-something dropbacks. We only pressured Andrew Luck Ugh. once. Zero sacks. Uh, and then we gave up. Obviously, Mariota went out by halftime uh, with with the next stinger. Um, but the O-line got trounced. Is, is, is that your key for this game? We just got to play better in the trenches. I mean, not yeah. play, play way better in the trenches. We were looking horrible on both sides of the ball. And it shouldn't be the case. You know, I, we had a comment on YouTube uh, the other day talking about how, um, you know, we – we're having trouble with the interior of our offensive line and whether we should replace these guys or ditch them. I'm like, this is the same offensive line we had two years ago that was one of the best in the league. Uh, Lawan and Conklin, both yeah. all pros. Uh, people were praising the signings of Josh Klein. Quentin Spain was holding his own, and Ben Jones has always been a reliable center. Uh, this season, it's looking like the complete opposite in a few of these games, and people are starting yeah. to question whether this this O line is really worth the money we're paying for him. Lawan is now the highest paid offensive yeah. lineman in NFL history, but uh, I think most people know. And we just extended yeah. uh, Josh Klein. J Rob gave Josh Klein yeah, an extension. And that's what's looking like the worst. And he's he's been part of the interior yeah, line. Yeah, but problem. I think yeah. that more. I think our offensive line play. Uh, especially their poor play more relies on how we don't how we haven't been having a good running attack this season so defenses are able to kind of yeah. hone in and pressure uh the pass game because they, they know whether Dion lewis who's been the the bell cow back for us which is odd or derrick henry whether either of them are back there they don't really have to worry much about the rushing attack um and so they can get they can they can yeah. hone in on Mariota and just pressuring him which is what teams have been doing so uh yeah what else would you add to to keys yeah. to this game besides the trenches? We got to play better in the trenches. Nothing. It's nothing. It's it's and even more specific. It's the offensive line trench that we we've got we've got to be able to protect Mario to end this game. Um, because the, the Colts were were blitzing and just killing us with the blitz. If if the Texans rush more than like four or five guys. I, I don't know how, how protection is going to be able to stand up with all the studs that they have that can blitz the, the quarterback. Uh, so, so we get, we have to be ready for, for a great protection scheme. Um, this, this guy, guys up front have, have got to play strong, play well, knock JJ Watt off his block and, and drive him into the field, into the turf or grass or whatever the Texans field is made of. Um, I mean, that, that is my, my biggest key, the, the offensive line trench and, and, because just so many things trickle down from that. Uh, Mariota, he, he gets confidence in the pocket. He plays better when he's not fearing a pass rush, when he doesn't in the back of his mind think, oh, in half a second, I'm going to have to run for, for my life because there is a J.J. Watt breathing down my neck, probably, because that's what's been happening for the first three quarters, hypothetically, in this made-up game I'm, I'm talking about here. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, just uh, everything kind of trickles down from from the offensive line, and if that happens, I think this offense can can be effective, make plays, and and put it up, put up enough points to to yes. win. Because we, yeah, like you said, we do have the number two scoring defense, so it is possible that they regroup and are able to keep the Texans contained. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, a little no, I like. I mean, you. a big criticism of Mariota, especially in the big games where we've given up a lot of sacks, like say to the Ravens, is that sometimes he holds on to the ball too much. And even I saw it early against the Colts game after they got a few hits on him. Uh, if he sees the blitz coming, yeah, his eyes start looking down, and I don't blame him because the dude is getting hit time and time again and getting injured. So uh, if he starts seeing the blitz, yeah, he's taking his eyes off the field and ends up just kind of panicking. So especially, you know, I'd like to see us. I want I want our offensive line to play better. 
period. But I especially want them to come out early and set the tone. I think that's huge because if we set the tone early, then Mariota can kind of get in that rhythm uh, and avoid the bad, uh, just the bad habit of starting to take his eyes off down, down the field and start looking towards the pressure. Yeah. So I, I want them to come out and set the tone early. Um, and, and keep that going. And uh, I think we're going to do it, man. I, I think this Texans team is beatable. It's a division game. I'm really interested to see how LaFleur yeah. comes out and game plans for this Texans defense. It's a team we already played once, but we had Blaine Gabbert uh, as the starting quarterback. So obviously we can do more with Mariota back there. Um, so, yeah, curious to see how LaFleur comes out after probably one of his worst games calling uh, plays against the Colts. The offense just looked absolutely horrible uh, with Mariota or Gabbert back there. Um, so, so yeah, that's another thing I'm going to be looking out for, how the team prepares in advance to this huge division game in prime time on Monday night on the road. But uh, but overall, I yes. think I think we're going to okay. win, dude. Maybe I'm a homer, but uh, the Texans yeah. don't scam me, dude. Oh, we are. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, yeah, I, I'm feeling a little more. I know if you watched our Colts recap, I was I was pretty down. I know you were too, but but I, I mean, I even said I, I can no longer trust this team to come out and play and and compete. And I just I want to see us, even if we lose and it's a close game, yeah. like I'll take that over over that performance we saw against the Colts. I want to see this team come out with some fire, some heart, some, some drive, and and just compete and and just show the NFL world that we're we're playing our tails off and and we are a team to be reckoned with we we will be physical we're gonna knock your knock you on your butt um and yeah i i just want i just want to see that that com- yeah that compete competing competingness it's, it's unfortunate how much i'm lost. It's unfortunate how much Save our blowout me. loss to the colts just lowered the ball for our all i mean lowered the bar for all titans fans now we're just like man if let's just compete with the texans on monday night we don't have to win but come on <laughs> stop putting up those just goose egg performances like we had against the Colts. I know we scored 10 points, yeah. so it wasn't technically a goose egg on the scoreboard. But uh, yeah, there's one, one goose zero, egg. But, one but zero. yeah, now, a, now at this point, like, can we just egg. show some heart, show some toughness, and compete like other NFL teams? Uh, so, so yeah, unfortunately, that's the sad truth that the Titans have just lowered the ball for, I mean, lowered the bar for their fan base. Um, but, uh, we're going to get it back. We're going to raise it back up, bench press yeah. that thing. I will bench press JJ Watt myself raise as we get the up. win over the Texans on Monday nights. Justin score prediction here. Yes. Uh, Titans win because they, uh, they always win on this channel. Always winners They're in always my heart. Here. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to get a 24 to, uh, 22, I don't know why, but the Texans find some stupid way to put okay. up 22 points. An unusual thing I to do. I bet it's a really but, stupid yeah. way, there like a fumbled onside kick returned for a lateral touchdown. Something like that. Uh, you know yes. what? I'm going to get I'm gonna get the win. That's I'm going to say we're going to get the win, too. I am looking for our offense to rebound, even against the Texans. Pretty stout defense. I think we're going to put up some points, dude, this week. Um, we put up 28 on our first Monday night game, four great touchdown drives against the Cowboys, another Texas team. We're playing in Houston this time. Uh, I'm going to say we go for, let's say, 32. Yeah. 32 to 25 Titans. That's Ooh. right. Offense is going to turn Ooh. it around. And that, that those are even – those are two – Two more yeah, weird numbers. Exactly, to score. I'm liking these weird numbers. I mean, the Titans team doesn't make sense now. Why should our score predictions make sense? You know, boom, boom. I like Drop it. I like the that pin. analogy. Okay, I guess that wraps it up. We don't have a whole lot to say after this week because this team is confusing as hell. Uh, we could come out and blow out the Texans by 50 points. We could lose by 50 points. Hard to say. Can't trust this team anymore. Justin, take us out. Amen. Taking, taking us out, guys. I appreciate – we both appreciate you guys tuning in, watching our videos here. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and uh, – uh, what? Oh, YouTube, I guess. Well, you already are watching this. Uh, and, and Instagram. Uh, be sure to check us out on iTunes. In case you don't want to look at our faces, you yeah. can listen to our voices. Uh, and you can find all that in, in the description below. Hang 10, Backyard Dog Barbecue Sauce. Excellent people running some excellent – stuff with their t-shirts and their sauce so be sure to check them out too uh but yeah let's go titans let's let's try to let's try to restore some hope in this fan base let's do it justin um, let's do it
Yeah, m- 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 Monday Night Football. Hopefully, do you think that they'll live up to the Monday Night Football game? That oh, we it's going to be a much Chiefs better game. I feel the hope bubbling we, up inside me. Just as we continue talking about this game, I'm like, you know what? We're going to we're gonna shock the world, be come like out a, on Monday night in prime time again. Everyone's like, oh, they just got blown out by the Colts. Titans are frauds. No, we're going to expose the Texans once again on Monday night. People are going to be like, oh, yeah, Mariota is their franchise quarterback once again after he throws for 300 yards and two touchdowns with another one rushing against that Houston D. I'm coming at you with all the predictions, yo. And then then the very next week, we get blown out by the Jets at home in true Titans fashion. That's what it means to be a Titans fan, to bleed two-tone blue. (laughs) Nothing truer. All right. Stay tuned for another great Madden challenge, hopefully, coming up right now.